that sounds like. Mask on, skin, fuck it, man. Yeah, but I don't know. It's, pro it's probably just, it's probably just coincidence. It's probably, probably just coincidence. Yeah, jump out boys, that's Nike boys hop in our coach. This shit way too big when we pull up, give me the loot. Yo, 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 they took they took the part from Biggie. They took the part from Biggie. Give me the loot, give me the loot. Give me the loot, give me the loot. Give me the loot. I gotta I gotta go listen to that song. Wonder what um Give me the loot, give me the loot. I've always wondered what that thing in the background is. Sounds like I'm a bad, bad man. I gotta, I gotta figure out where that's from. Where did that come from? I'm a bad, bad man. I'm a bad, bad man. Yeah. <laughs> Sampling. Sampling is the use of when assessing the inventiveness of any art form. Originality is a point that often comes into play. This is true for all media. For many, originality is the precipice in which creativity stands upon, so much so that the nature of both are inseparable, and to judge one without the other would be pointless. Adding to this mindset, the paranoia of plagiarism and the conduct of capitalism keep most intellectual properties from ever seeing the public domain. Taking things that would once be free to reform and making them valuable commodities that companies can lord over and build brands off of. All of these factors combined are what make digital sampling such a conundrum to the music industry. Regardless of the stigma surrounding it, sampling has become a practice extremely prevalent in the production of modern music, most notably in hip hop. A genre of music in which its entire foundation is built upon remixing old records and repurposing them. With Billboard numbers playing hip hop as currently the most popular genre, the music industry and fans alike have a lot to think about in terms of sampling should be criminalized or not. Someone recorded this sound. So does that mean they own it if I go? Most people would have you to believe that sampling is a new phenomenon, unique to hip-hop used primarily as a substitute to skill. But is this really the case? Hip-hop was created by poor youths within the inner city, people without access to the money or education necessary to produce their own music, creating a demand for new ways to repurpose other songs. Sampling in hip-hop comes from how DJs will loop break beats by spinning records back to give people something to dance or to rap over. Back then, Hip-hop was mainly just about controlling the crowd, and the scratching, looping, and remixing of other sounds was the perfect way to do it. No one had ever expected it to be something that was commercial, let alone something that got its own record. When it did reach that point, with the first record being Rapper's Delight by the Sugar Hill Gang, a lot of the elements of DJing production still stayed. Sheik's Good Times and Here Comes That Sound again were both songs that were sampled to create the beat of Rapper's Delight. What's interesting about all this is that while digital sampling in music is indeed the direct result of hip hop culture, sampling in of itself began way before hip hop. Music is always borrowed from other sources and has always been quite derivative. This was humorously pointed out by the band Axis of Awesome in their song Four Chords, in which they're able to sing a total of 52 popular songs over the same melody. Why? Because they all utilize the same chord progression. And Nobody wants to see us together, but it don't matter. Pop music has also been known to sample too, taking melodic hooks and lyrical riffs to create some of its catchiest tunes. Ed Sheeran's Galway Girl samples Boega's Minute 5 to create the background melody during the chorus. Ariana Grande's song, Seven Rings, while not a direct sample, bases its melody off the famous My Favorite Things from the film Sound of Music. paper packages tied up with strings. These are a few of my favorite things. 
It even makes use of the sample in the same way a hip hop song would. It uses the sample melody not only to call back to the original song, but to present a completely different message with it. So using the idea that sampling is a new phenomenon unique to hip hop to justify its stigma is a misguided argument at best. Another stigma that sampling falls victim to is the idea that producers nor their listeners have any respect for the content that they sample. This idea can likely be traced back to how artists like Clyde Stubblefield have complained about never receiving royalty checks or recognition despite being some of the most sample artists in history. However, this is more likely due to the bad handling of the industry and less to do with the sample-based producers in general. Nowadays, copyright laws can be so heavy that sample-based songs might never get clearance due to the amount of money that might have to be paid to use it. This stigma is particularly damaging because it fails to see the potential sampling has in introducing older and obscure artists to newer fans. Take this song for example, Diana in the Autumn Wind by Gap Magion. But if you check the comments section, you'll find a lot more conversation about Jay Dilla and Madlib, both producers who sampled different sections of the song. A lot of these sampled songs follow these trends, people in the comments section remarking that they found the original thanks to the remake, and thus learning to appreciate genres of music which they wouldn't have normally listened to. As for the producers, they are just as much fans of what they sample as the consumers of the original product. For them, sampling and record collecting go hand in hand. How many records do you have at home? Uh, I only weighed them like four times. You weighed yeah, yeah. four times. Yeah, it's too many to when count. I was moving them. Yeah, yeah. Four tons of records. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that is amazing. For a lot of critics, sampling is a confirmation for the many biases towards hip hop that they already held. It is cited as evidence that hip hop music is built upon the foundation of lazy composition by people who shouldn't call themselves composers. But this stigma ignores reality. Sample based producers don't assert themselves as composers for a reason and instead of earning the name producer as an acknowledgement of the work supervising and determining the overall sound. Biases aside, sample is an extremely important aspect of modern music that does have its pros and cons. It can occasionally qualify as legitimate stealing as none of the original artists are always credited or paid dues for their sound. But the more you look into it, the more you'll find that this is indicative of an unfair industry that is yet to adjust to the prevalence of digital sampling. Oftentimes, sample clearances are extremely expensive for the producer while simultaneously failing to pay the original musician and instead benefiting the label or whoever's name is on the cover. This is unfair for both parties, especially if said producer only sampled 6 seconds of the original work. The logic of fair use would lead you to believe this would require little compensation, but if the song is popular, then labels will try to squeeze as much money as they can from it. At the end of the day, sampling is an art form that can be beneficial to the industry. After all, its producers are part of the reason why vinyl is still alive today. But if the biases towards it continue, as well as the insufficient laws surrounding it, it will never reach the potential that it deserves.